Okay, so for the sound check, what's your favourite dinosaur and why? My favourite dinosaur is a Stegosaurus because they're awesome. Fantastic. So, where were you born and raised? I was born at St Mary's Hospital in Manchester and I grew up in Manchester, but I spent quite a lot of my time growing up in New Mills as well. Why are you living in the High Peak now? Because I love living in the High Peak. I, growing up in Manchester, loving going walking whenever it was sunny. The Peak District was immediately where we'd come to go, to go for walks, so I've always grown up wanting to live here. And before I got elected, I lived in Glossop, commuting on the train into Manchester, where I worked. Okay, so what were your first and your latest jobs? My first job, I was... My first official job, so one where I actually got paid for um, through, the, through the payroll of the taxman, would be the fishmonger. I worked on the fish counter at Asda in Manchester. And my latest job was working as the Member of Parliament for High Peak, the best job in the world. So, what skills and experiences did you bring to the role as MP? Well, I can bone and fillet a mean fish. I uh, used to be a chartered accountant, so I've worked with businesses of all shapes and sizes, small family businesses, some of the biggest, fastest growing tech companies in the world, from industries such as defence, healthcare, infrastructure, transport. So I have all that experience, but my core experience is as my time as the Member of Parliament over the last five years. And I've shown over that time that I know how to get things done for the high peak, be it securing £11 million to regenerate Buxton Town Centre, getting high peaks breast cancer screening unit reinstated, stopping the University of Derby's plans for an asylum centre in the High Peak, saving 77 acres of green belts on Chinley Churn, or getting £7 million to re restore Glossop Town Hall and the Market Hall just behind us. So many different things have shown I know how to get things done. What, what standards do you expect from elected politicians? I think that people have a right to expect high standards of their elected representatives. A big part of the reason I decided to stand is that, frankly, I think politicians were failing people, and I want to put a stop to that. And so I think there are several things which we have a right to expect of those people who represent us. The first thing is that they work hard and that they're accessible. And I think I've shown that working hard round the clock, taking up over 60,000 individual cases on behalf of local people, responding to over 112,000 emails, I hold weekly health and advice surgeries across the constituency, open to everyone, no appointment needed, regular meetings in supermarkets, in local pubs. Um, I've got an office on the High Street in Wade Bridge, so always open and accessible, not hiding away in London or in some ivory tower. And the second thing I think we have a right to expect of your elected representatives is integrity, that they do the right thing, that they put the country and the constituency that they represent ahead of party politics. I believe that's something I've demonstrated over the last five years. So what are your three favourite things about the High Peak? Uh, that's a very easy question. First of all, the beautiful countryside. We all know just how wonderful the Peak District is. It's a special place. I think we've all got a responsibility to conserve it for future generations. My way of relaxing is to get out into the hills, walk in. And it doesn't matter what the weather is. Just get away, get away and escape. And that's what I absolutely love. The second thing is just the amazing food, the restaurants, the pubs, the cafes, the local businesses, all the amazing events. I'm sat here with a co coffee from Poco just around the corner, we're in the middle of Norfolk Square in Glossop where we're getting ready for Heritage Weekend. Those amazing businesses and events are just such a wonderful thing and make living here such a joy. And thirdly, and most importantly, it's the people. When I'm down in London working in Parliament, people in London, they're so unfriendly, they don't talk to you, no one chats on the tube, it's all very atomised and isolated, but in the high peak, everyone's friendly, it's a real community, people look, up, look after one another, and it's just such a wonderful, lovely place to live. So what are the top three problems for the high peak? Ah, it's a competitive field, so coming up with the top three isn't the easiest, but I would say that the top three, first of all, transport. Uh, the state of the roads, the congestion, the lack of pu public transport that is reliable and frequent and you can depend on, that is a huge problem in, this, in, the, in the High Peak and um, much of the north of England. So 
I'm desperate to fix fix that issue, getting the potholes repaired, investing in our roads and our railways and our buses so that we can actually get the high peak moving again. And the second one <laughs> uh, would be um, access to healthcare. Uh, obviously we've had the pandemic which has put a huge strain on the NHS and that has meant that it's much more difficult for people to see a doctor, to get a dentist and that is something which we desperately need to change. And thirdly, I would say it comes down to the issue of the economy and jobs because everything that we want to do in terms of things like investing in transport, in schools, in healthcare, all of those things, if you don't have a growing economy then can't deliver those things and if you have inflation running through the roof then no one can afford anything so that is absolutely essential so that you've got the jobs and you've got the economy and the stability so that people can start a business so they've got a secure home so that they can depend on the future and plan ahead and not be stuck in a situation where they're facing rising bills all the time and so that desperately needs to be addressed so how would you solve these problems? Okay, so first of all, transport. This is a big one. How do we solve that issue? First of all, it's the basics, fixing the roads. That's why I've worked so hard to secure an extra £176 million to, to go towards roads in Derbyshire. And that needs to be spent properly, not just patching constantly. It needs to be a full plan over many years. This is going to be our road resurfacing plan, so you fix first time every time and not waste money on shoddy, shoddy patching. It's also about investing in the infrastructure, not just maintenance. So that's upgrading our railway lines. That's why I fought so hard to get the £145 million upgrade of the Hope Valley line. We're trying to get that line electrified now as well. We also want to upgrade on the Buxton line, on the Glossop line, to get Gainsley Station built to deliver for one of the most deprived communities in the country to help them get access to jobs and employment in the town centre. Also, to improve buses, I managed to get £47 million extra for improving bus services locally. And we've had some success. We've managed to reinstate the 185 bus to Buxton Hospital or to Harper Hill. We've managed to extend the 272 bus uh, later on the weekends so that people in the Hope Valley can go out in Sheffield and then come back late on the bus. We've extended the 341 bus so that people who work in, in Glossop can get back after work on the bus to Gamesley or to Charlesworth, which they couldn't do before, and also been able to save other buses like the 358, get the 199 reinstated going to Manchester Airport. There's lots more to do on the bus front. And finally, it's about investing in our roads. We've got to get a traffic solution for Buxton and the A6, where there's real problems ever since the A555 opened. I've worked together with other MPs in the region, set up an A6 task force, so the councils High Peak in Derbyshire, in Stockport, in Cheshire, and you're working together to come up with a way to improve traffic flow along that corridor. We also need to sort out the horrendous traffic mess that is Blossom and Hadfield, and that's why I have pushed so hard to get the Mottram Bypass built. I live on the main road in the centre of Blossom. I'm the first MP to live in Blossom since 1929. This is something that's been very personal to me. I'm very proud to say that construction on the Mottram Bypass is going to begin this August. Next, how do we deal with the issue of healthcare? Again, it's a huge, huge challenge to tackle the challenges in the NHS, to recover from COVID. That's involving record real-term increase funding to recruit doctors and nurses so we can increase GP appointments to catch up on that backlog. But it's also why I've pushed so hard to reinstate the breast cancer screening unit, to improve, improve that access to healthcare, to get new urgent care centres built at Tameside Hospital, at Stepping Hill Hospital, open two new specialist mental health units at, again at Tameside and at Stepping Hill, one for men, one for women. That's why I'm working so, so hard to get a major new health centre for Buxton, working with the local NHS. I'm also working with dentists to open a new NHS dental practice in the High Peak because dental access is not good enough. That's why there's a new dental recovery plan to try and train more dentists but also encourage more to left to the private sector because of the awful old NHS contract that was written up in 2008 to bring them back into the NHS providing free dental health for people. So there's a huge amount that needs to be done when it comes to healthcare. But as I've already said, if you're going to be able to pay for all those things, you need to have a strong economy that's growing. And that's why for the third, the third challenge facing the high peak in the country is about economic stability, economic growth, tackling the cost of living. 
that's why everything that the government has been doing over the last couple of years has been focused on getting inflation under control. It was up at 11% after COVID and after the war in Ukraine. We were able to get that down to nearly 2%, which is making a very big difference in terms of pressures and bills. But at the same time, it's about jobs. I'm really, really passionate about helping people into work and helping people get the skills that they need in apprenticeships. That's why one of my promises at the last election, and one I've delivered on, is to set up the first ever High Peak Jobs and Apprenticeships Fair programme, which we've done every year since I was elected. Over 1,000 local people more are now in work than they were when I started the programme. That's made a real positive difference to lots of people. I want to continue with that program. There's also a risk here. Um, Labour's, Labour's proposal when it comes to jobs is to introduce a French style trade union laws which would effectively make it so much harder for employers to take on new workers and that would put at risk huge numbers of jobs. Remember every single Labour government that's ever come into office has left the employees higher than when they entered office. So it isn't just my job that's on the line at this election, there are tens of thousands of other jobs that are on the line. So we need to make certain that we get the economy right. One, so that people have secure jobs and secure homes, but two, so that we can improve the country, so that we can improve our health service, so we can improve our schools, so that we can build the bypass, so that we can invest in our railways and our buses. None of those things are possible unless you have a solid foundation of economic growth. Finally, why should we trust you? Why should we trust me? Well, I think that actions speak louder than words, and I believe that over the last five years I've demonstrated that I know how to get things done. All the things that we've been able to achieve by working together with local people, things like getting the High Peak Jobs and Apprenticeships Fair programme set up, getting the Mottram Bypass built, upgrading the Hope Valley line, securing investment in Buxton Town Centre, in Glossop Town Centre, securing levelling up funding, and securing huge amounts of additional money for Buxton Opera House and Buxton Festival to get levelling up funding for Glossop Town Centre, to reinstate the breast cancer screening unit. All those things I've demonstrated through the hard work that I've put in, that I know how to get things done, and that if you re-elect me, I will continue to deliver. Now the election is a choice. All the polls show that Labour and Keir Starmer are going to win a huge majority. So your vote won't change the national result, but it will decide who represents you as your local MP in the High Peak. That is the choice you need to think long and hard about. All I can ask to local people is come into this election with an open mind, think really carefully, listen to all the arguments, judge me on my record locally, what we've been able to achieve over the last five years working together, and how we can continue to keep working together to make High Peak an even better place to live. So, Judge me on that local record, think long and hard, breathe deep, and on the 4th of July, vote local, vote Largo. Thank you very much. Good stuff.